championships, and the number one seed comes out to play the Texas Longhorns to face an old nemesis, Texas Tech. Hi, everybody. Great to have you with us. Paul Spitter. We all know Bobby Knight's a great coach. This one may test him today. Yeah, he's going to have to be today on the paper. This looks like it's a mismatch. It was in the regular season. We'll see what it is at tournament time. He is tremendous, and he's going to have to find a way to stop one of the best teams in the nation and maybe playing with a short stick. John Plifka may not be playing much today. So let's take a look at the starting lineups and a little bit of a surprise for the Red Raiders here. A reward for a surprising and outstanding performance yesterday for Tanner Ogden. He's in the starting lineup today. Scored 16 points in the conference regular season. Got 14 yesterday. He's out there with Jerry Staxon, Daryl Doherty, or Lohorn, and Martin Zeno. For Texas, the player of the year in the conference, P.J. Tucker, may not be the best player on his team. That could be LaMarcus Aldridge. Brad Buckman's in there with Polino and with Gibson. So, game one of four here today in Dallas in our star watch, Paul. Well, you take a look at Jarius Jackson. He is the motor that won't stop for Texas Tech. Tough shooting day yesterday for Jackson, but he finds a way to get things done. And you talk about maybe the best player for the Longhorns, LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, stands head and shoulders above everybody in this league, not just his stature, but also his playing talent. Pro scouts are here looking at him this weekend. For good reason. <laughs> He's really something. On the Texas Tech bench, with his back to you, shielded by players right now. Bob Knight, the general, his 40th year as a head coach, fifth year at Texas Tech, suffering through one of the toughest years he's ever had. They are 14 and 16, but they came to Dallas to win a game and see what happens, according to him. Well, they've won a game. Now they'll see what happens. Down on the other bench, Rick Barnes, eighth year at Texas, 19th year overall. Rick Barnes doing a tremendous job. His team 25 and 5 this year. Finished the season as co-champions 13 and 3 and got the number one seed because they beat their co-champion Kansas during the regular season. Really hasn't been a smooth ride for Rick Barnes and his ball club, but right now they're right about where they were expected to be when the season opened. They opened the year the first five weeks of the year. The number two team in the nation slipped out of that spot, but they're on the comeback trail now. Inside, they find P.J. Tucker in a hurry, but he missed the shot, and Tanner Ogden got the rebound. Well, boards are going to be a big story in today's ballgame. Texas Tech was out-rebounded by a dozen at UT, out-rebounded by an unsightly 28 boards in a home game later on in the year. And lost those two teams by two games by 24 and 21 points, respectively. Dora, there's Martin Zeno. And the jump shot, good. That's how he started yesterday's game. Same kind of a shot, and he nailed it. And the Red Raiders go up by a couple. That just started out in a man-to-man -man defense that time. They played playing a whole lot of 2-3 zone this year. Zeno with the rebound of a Brad Buckman miss. Now there's Jarius Jackson. He had a tough shooting day yesterday. Four for 17 from the floor. But he was 11 for 12 from the free throw line. Now Zeno against Tucker. Jackson, Gibson defending him. It's a chore. Well, you talk about what things have to happen for Texas Tech to have much of a shot here today, and a quick start would seem to be a must. They'd like to have Texas have a cold shooting start to today's ball game, and they need to have good possessions on their end of the floor. There is Jackson shot, rebounded by Tanner Ogden, and Zeno all alone as Tucker fell down, the shot missed. And we've got a foul call, and it's going to go against Texas. Buckman picks up the first foul in the ball game. One of the keys for Texas is Pete Buckman healthy. He missed five games earlier this year with a variety of injuries. Dora in the middle. Tanner Ogden, he was good from there yesterday. He's good from there to start the game today. Well, Tanner Ogden played 10 minutes three games ago. He played 12 minutes the final regular conference game. And then he played the 26 minutes yesterday, a career high for him. And all of a sudden, he finds himself in the starting line. Daniel Gibson answers at the other end. Well, Daniel Gibson was the guy you heard so much about a year ago for the Texas Longhorns. He's kind of slipped back into the shadows a little bit with P.J. Tucker back on the active roster. LaMarcus Aldridge hurt. Gibson has come on strong the last couple of games. Now Jackson blocked by LaMarcus Aldridge. And here comes the Longhorns. Texas Tech offense works right there. A curl cut got him away. I think got swatted away. Paulino a miss. Back inside. It goes to Aldridge. A bucket and a foul. He'll get the two and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, Texas Tech has come out shooting well from the field. Tanner Ogden burying one from the top of the key. He got that one down. 
Good offensive possession for Texas Tech. They got a couple different looks because of offensive boards. They're going to have trouble finishing inside against a bigger Texas team. Texas no problem finishing that time down with LaMarcus Aldridge. Connor Alden drew that foul. LaMarcus Aldridge, they list him at 6'10". He's got to be seven feet tall, and on top of that, he's long. Well, you go out on the floor with some of these college basketball players, and I'm 6'3", and I can look eyeball to eyeball with some guys listed at 6'5". Texas isn't that way. They're pretty le pretty legitimate with their listings. If they got a 6'3 guy, I figure he's 6'3. If they say he's 6'5, he'll be 6'5. Yeah, they, they measure him in their stocking feet. Kenton Paulino to bring it up for Texas. Longhorns up by a point. Early on, the Big 12 championships from American Airlines Arena in Dallas. We're in for a good day. Becker, Paulino. When you play Texas Tech, you'd be pretty assured you're going to see man-to-man -man defense all afternoon. O.J. Tucker's going to be whistled for a travel, and the Red Raiders get it back. Yeah, Bobby Knight doesn't very much, does he? Well, he's got some things, some standards that he sets for his team and for their performance, things he expects out of his guys. He knows the kind of players he wants to recruit, what the expectations are. The team looks every bit like the Indiana teams that he had for so many years. They run the same motion offense, the same bumps, the back picks, the curl cuts, and the man-to-man -man defense, as you mentioned. Yeah, you get playing against their offense, Tanner Lawton with the winner of the long toe. Lohorn takes it back up and scores. You play against the Texas you Tech offense, you probably feel like the ball in a pinball machine before the day's over because you're going to get bumped and banged a lot. Well, when you play them, you've got to keep your defensive position away from the basketball. You almost want to be on ball side. You know where everything's coming from. Huh? I've got Aldridge. Turn around jumper. Marcus Aldridge has six. Texas leads 8-7. Well, Marcus Aldridge is a guy that wasn't talked a lot a whole lot early in the season coming back from that hip injury a year ago But Rick Barnes said at that time by the end of the year probably by Christmas everybody will be talking about it. Well, Aldridge scores for Texas Tech. Aldridge had that surgery March 1st a year ago Boy, he has really come on to be a terrific player. Now Daniel Gibson with a miss and the rebound to Martin Zeno Zeno and Jarius Jackson are like twin energizer bunnies out there. They, just, they really have motors. Now Buckman with an interception and a foul on Tanner Ogden is second. Thank you. Texas doesn't come up and play preseason games here in Dallas. There's been some talk about that. Texas Tech comes in every year. Molino. Missed his first two tries. He's been shooting it well for the Longhorn. Now Jackson. Now Zeno. Well, coming up here, Baylor came up and practiced during those early months of the season when they were not allowed to play non-conference games. They turned it into a road trip. Well, they tried to do what they could do uh, with the restrictions that they had. How about the finish that they had in the season? I think now that it's all said and done for them, they were very competitive yesterday. If that could have won yesterday's ball game against Colorado would have been the first time that a 12 seed had beaten a number five seed. I think that's a terrific year for Scott Drew, everything that he had to battle. And tip your hat to him and his staff and that team. How about Jarius Jackson? Three, he just knocked down. Now Scott Drew with a tremendous job. No 12 seed had ever won four teams before in conference play. Hats off to him. Texas Tech, that last possession was ideal for them. Build the shot clock and get points at the end. They're in a combination zone right now, a box and one. Jay Jackson chasing Daniel Gibson. Yeah, they got Polino wide open, and he knocked it down that time, and it's 12-11, Texas Tech by one. Texas is just one of those teams, pick your poison. I mean, you, who are you going to try to shut down? You, you've got so many weapons out there. You've got an inside presence. You've got some mid-range scores. You've got guys that like to put the ball on the floor and slash. You've got terrific perimeter shooters. Who do you want to try to shut down? Where do you want to concentrate in? You're going to weaken yourself someplace else. Darius Jackson off the front of the rim, and here comes Polino. Well, there's a line in which Cassidy and Sundance kids are going to fight, and he said, guns or knives? Neither. <laughs> Williams with a turnaround jump shot. Here's a pretty good athlete coming off the Texas bench. A uh, kid has spent the uh, early part of the season injured. He had left knee injury, a left ankle injury. He got back into their regular rotation in mid-January. He's picking up more times. He's got some early minutes here this afternoon as he picks up Brad Buckman in that front line. Zeno watching his offense. Tanner Ogden in the corner. No shot for him. Put it on the floor and gets rid of it. In the middle, the Jarius Jackson down the lane with the left hand. Well, good movement without the basketball that time. Jarius Jackson doesn't have to have the ball in his hands at that point guard position to be effective. The curl cut was there. Wide open coming down the lane and a great delivery from Ogden. 
Jackson chasing Daniel Gibson, and Gibson throws up a shot that's missed, but he was fouled. We got a timeout here. This comes with 13-34 left in our first half. It is 14-13 Texas Tech. Texas Tech hanging with the number one seed. The Red Raiders the number eight seed. The Longhorns number one. And Texas Tech with a one-point lead in the early going. Well, Texas came out maybe a little bit lethargic and uh, not getting some shots down early. Had some second chance opportunities. But Texas Tech has come out playing well within their offensive sets. They're 6 of 11 from the floor. Had a nice mix. They've hit a couple threes. They've also gotten the ball inside with some nice cuts. They've gotten some mid-range scoring. So Texas Tech doing what they can. They're off to a good start, leading by a point. That's Jarius Jackson. He is in this ball game two for five. He was four for 17 yesterday, but scored 21 points. He was 11 for 12 from the free throw lot. Well, that's the part of Jarius Jackson you really like, have to like if you're a Texas Tech fan. Simply finds a way to get things done. Gibson with a miss. Daniel Gibson, a 73% shooter, the 6'2 sophomore from Houston from Jones High School. throughout the course of this season, but healthy now as he comes into postseason play. He'll get another shot there. We just need to step back a little further, get behind that line. Too easy. Nobody guarding him. Uh, caught he in rhythm five. that time, and he was able to bury the three. Texas got a little three-quarter court pressure. Penn State with a three-point lead over Ohio State in the Big Ten tournament. A little bit of a surprise there, but it's early. There have been surprises, as always, in the postseason. Texas going zone for the first time this afternoon. Match up with it. Texas Tech against the zone will normally tack in the middle of it, up in the high lane area. See if Martin Zeno there. Zeno getting in there. That's not Zeno. That's uh, Lowhorn. But that's the area they like to attack. Every night throughout his career has always tried to attack the zone in the middle. And Rogan missed a three. That's B.J. Tucker at the other end, but he misses. And Ogden hauls down the rebound. And the Red Raiders going to walk it up. Well, Texas Tech, I'm sure, would like to play in a half-court ball game. Use their offensive set, work the shots out, try to limit the possessions in this game. Texas Tech, Texas would like to push the tempo, try to get it, go the full 94 feet. Foul the number five. This really allows Texas Tech to slow down the pace of this ball game. They don't really tend to slow down the team on the offensive end. Be a little more patient. Of course, that zone to stretch out a bit. Zeno got it in the lane, and there's good for Marcus Aldridge. So all the Texas Tech guys will do a pump fake when they catch the ball. See if they can get the defense up in the air. Time to get that offense going. Eight seconds left. There's Jarius Jackson broke through a double team and missed the shot. And right back comes A.J. Abrams for the Longhorns of Texas. It's the easiest thing to do, let the air out of the basketball for the full 35 seconds and then still get a good look at the basket that the Raiders get. P.J. Tucker a miss off the baseline. He's 0 for 3. The Horns are 6 for 14. Texas Tech is 6 for 13. And Texas leading the Red Raiders by 2 here at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. When Texas Tech gets in the ball into that high lane, it's got to be in the hands of a guy who's a good passer. Somebody who's as comfortable passing the ball as he is shooting it because they will key their offense from the free throw line. Got to have a good pass so they'll weave different players in and out. Tanner Ogden, who got hot yesterday, one for four in this one today. There's Gibson losing the ball at the baseline, and it's out of bounds to Texas Tech. We've got a break here. 11.09 left in our first half. Texas Tech down by two to the number one seed Longhorns. The way this one looks right now, Texas up by two over Texas Tech. You don't have to miss any of the excitement, just stay with us. Marcus pleased with something. He takes a little breather here. Brad Buckman and Mike Williams on the front line now for Texas. Tucker Paulino and A.J. Abrams out there for the Longhorns. Tanner Ogden still in the ball game for Texas Tech. Jackson, Dora, Lohorn, and Zeno. Texas Tech, because of a couple defections and injuries, are really shorthanded here this afternoon. Texas will have an advantage with the depth, and Rick Barnes rotating his players in and out right now, keeping people fresh. Finals number 22. Brian Buckman, that's on Brad Buckman, and that's his second foul for Texas. 
Daryl Dora to the line, an 85% free throw shooter, had a dozen points, and nine rebounds yesterday as Tech beat Kansas State. Dora got him both. Most days where Dora has a good ball game, he's gotten off to a quick start. Those were his first points here this afternoon. Scored in double figures yesterday against Kansas State and is one of three Texas Tech Red Raiders who played all 40 minutes. Luke Jackson, Martin Zeno, and Daryl Dora all logged 40 minutes in yesterday's game for Texas Tech. And if they have to do it again today, and if they win, it'll take a call by tomorrow. There's a block and a shot right back for block in the Paulino bucket by Zeno, but Paulino got it back and knocked it down, and the Longhorns up by two. Close ball game to start the day here in Dallas. Well, close ball games was the story of the day yesterday. It was the story of this league throughout the regular season. So, I stayed in trouble earlier against Penn State. Is anybody safe in conference play? No. When you, once you get to the tournament, how about this right here? Duke and Miami. Yeah, hey, uh, Leonard Hamilton's got some athletes on that Miami team. Not that Mike Krzyzewski doesn't. <laughs> that other guy isn't playing shorthanded. Tucker. Texas Tech really packing that defense in now trying to take away the inside game. Texas Tech or Texas perimeter players looking inside trying to get something going. Tanner Ogden just grabbed his third rebound. And he's contributing in today. He's got to feel pretty good about himself. Had the great day yesterday, his best day ever with 14 points. And how about the fact his brother is sitting on the Texas bench as an assistant coach? Yeah, his brother was out here scouting Texas Tech yesterday. Had never scouted his brother before. Well, Chris, while you were away at college, your little brother grew up. He felt into a pretty good player. Abrams to Tucker. Daniel Gibson will return for Texas. Tucker had a knock out of his hands by Jarius Jackson, and Jackson then fouled him. That's trouble. That's his second foul. And Bob Knight, the Texas head coach. Now he's going to have to play with the two fouls. They simply cannot afford to have him off the floor. That's one of the things you see that P.J. Tucker brings. You might get the hand on the ball, but you got to battle for it to get possession. A.J. Abrams. Texas Tech now in the man-to-man -man defense again, trying to pack it inside, force Texas out on the perimeter. Texas just three of eight from three-point range here in this ball game. So, all night, making the run. has got to pound it inside right now. So far, their defense is working. How about the tip by Lamarcus Aldridge? That's Tucker. He's a ball in there. Now Aldridge. He's long. That won't go. Try it again and again. And it still won't go. And Texas Tech battling hard. Daryl Dora came out of there with it. And a foul called on Texas. That was a war on the boards right there. And Fred, I, we might be seeing the two toughest matchups in this league for anybody. The length of LaMarcus Aldridge, the strength of P.J. Tucker. Both of those guys in there using their talents. Two-man battle going on for Texas against all the black shirts. Pretty much an even draw right there. Now Tanner Ogden is fouled by Daniel Gibson as they bring the ball the other way. Final number one, Daniel Gibson in the long horns is first. <laughs> Top of the key, gives it, giving it up. You mentioned playing with two fouls. One thing that Bob Knight asked of all of his players, play smart. Be on time, play hard, and play smart. Coaches talk about it, he demands it. Boy, Aldridge went to the jam and didn't get it. He was fouled by Tanner Orton, and that's his third. So he may be coming out of the ball game. Michael Prince is up getting his warm-up off. Tanner Ogden said it of his coach yesterday. Well, he told me to be ready today, but he says that sometimes, and I don't play. Well, most <laughs> coaches will tell you, be ready, that you'll be called at some point or another. Really don't know where it's going to be, and most of the good coaches work a lot on matchups. They look at what the personnel is on the floor that they need and what they're going against. And yesterday, Tanner Ogden got a big call. And he went to first 11-47 of this one, sits down with three fouls. Marcus Aldridge now has seven points, now eight. And a four-point lead to the Longhorns of Texas, their biggest lead. The Red Raiders were up by five earlier. 8.05 was in first half action. Prince just off the bench. Texas with three guards on the floor right now with Polino, Gibson, and A.J. Abrams. Abrams, a freshman, picking up more minutes late in the season. Really improved his defensive play over the last few weeks. That's led to more playing time for the Longhorns. Marcus Aldridge knocked the pass back out of there. Prince trying to save it does. 
for Darius Jackson, and the shot clock goes off. Shot clock violation, and they turn it over here. Timeout, 7.38 left in our first half. Texas. 2016, Texas leading Texas Tech in the early going here. Texas Tech maybe taking a little bit of a toll right now on the Red Raiders. Texas Tech played yesterday. Texas did not. So substitutions now for Bob Knight's team. Bosco, Alan Bosco is in along with Michael Prince coming off the Red Raider bench. And there's Tanner Ogden just coming out of the ball game. How about this year? The conference games all season, 16 points. A game and a quarter here today. He scored 17. I have that for the Red Raiders. Tanner Ogden. One brother on one bench. There's the older brother. This Ogden, one of the assistants for Rick Barnes. and all of a sudden Ogden looked up and said, well, that's my winner out there. A.J. Abrams knocks down a long go. He's better than 40% shooter from long range, Fred, and Texas Tech in his zone that time, packs it back in. Abrams doing everything he can to break them out of that zone defense. Texas pledging a little daylight between themselves and the Raiders, a seven-point lead for the Longhorns right now. Now Jarius Jackson trying to answer can. Darrell Dora can with an offensive rebound and a stick back, his fourth point. Well, that's what Tech needed was the second chance opportunity. They were 0 for their last seven field goal attempts and 0 for their last four long range. That's why you've got a couple new shooters on the floor. They have gone seven minutes without a field goal. Now Abrams, oh boy, Tucker just set a pick on Bosco. Shot missed, rebound good. to hang on in this one, trying to keep it close. Texas with so many weapons. Back in that zone defense, just open up some opportunities long range. Last Cole, one of the better perimeter shooters for Texas Tech, missed from straight on. And a foul called against Texas. And he hanging in there against Duke. On the long hard, as first, take six. Seven trying to open the spread up a little bit. Bob Knight looking down his bench. Alino to Abrams. Combination zone this time. Jay Jackson chasing Daniel Gibson. 15 to shoot for Texas. Gibson resets the offense. Alino is a shot clock. Down to five now as Polino lets one fly. Won't go, rebound Daryl Dora, Texas Tech. So the Red Raiders survived that charge from Texas. Jackson, Costco. That was the Texas Tech had against Texas early this year. Anytime you get a stop on the defensive end, get a one shot, and now you've got to feel like that's a small victory. Tough shooting luck for Daryl Dora there. He had it in that came right back out again. Abrams, oh, he's quick. P.J. Tucker, boy, he's strong. <laughs> Down the line he goes and scores. Well, all those parts for Texas Longhorns all seem to fit. Everybody brings a lot to the table, and all of them a little bit different. Some of them a little bit bigger and stronger. Some of them longer and quicker. Some of them are good inside players. Some of them are perimeter types. Tucker's first two points, he has a half dozen rebounds. Now Dora, now Bosco, now Lohorn. Goal. Take the shot. Ten to shoot now for the Red Raiders. Dora puts it on the floor. Casper gets that same shot now inside ten seconds. He'll take it. And a whistle blowing down in the lane. A foul away from the ball. Want to see how strong P.J. Tucker is? Well, he's the player of the year in this conference. They made the award to him right before the start of this game. Shot on the run. The running one-hander able to get it to go down. 
case for Colorado. They've won 20 ball games. Uh, they're a veteran ball club. I, I could make a case for them. a and I think they've done enough, but I still think you're right. They have to approach this game like they both need to win it. In fact, a couple of the Colorado assistants said that I came by before the ball game said, what do you think? Do we have to win? They're pulling everybody, answer, except they? the guys that are going to make the vote. Yeah. <laughs> Call Indianapolis and ask them what they think. There's a bad pass. We got it. Texas. Elvin had it. Elvin's got it. They took it away from right. him. Texas showing season. the same press that they showed early, but a little more intensity, a little more aggressive when they got the trap along the sideline. That was Bob Knight yelling at her staff station. Elvin's not catching the ball over there. Shot no good. Michael Prince of the board. P.J. Tucker hit the deck. Who in the heck knocked him down? Pretty impressive. Bosco hits the deck. Now Prince fires it back outside. Texas Tech has done an incredible job on the boards here in this first half. They're trailing by just four carams early on. They outmanned a couple games earlier in the regular season. Rebounding totals. Hit called on Dora. Connor Ashley now into the ball game for Texas. Had some playing time recently, but thought was the Rick Bonds would go to him in the first half. They wanted to get him some minutes, get him ready for postseason. First few players getting their first look at postseason play. Didn't take Ashley long to get involved. Didn't take him very long at all. 31-18, the Longhorns up by 13 points now. And moving away from Texas Tech. Darius Jackson, who usually has the answer for the Red Raiders, knocks down a runner in the lane. Are they going to count it? There was a foul. Connor Ashley just off the bench. He's got marks and two columns already. A bucket and, and a foul. Jarius Jackson. Jarius Jackson. He throw missed. Ashley with the board. Still 31 18. The bucket didn't count. Shot at the other end comes in a hurry, and now a whistle blowing and a foul at the other end. Boy, Texas attacking quickly on that sideline break. Get the defensive rebound, get the ball in the hands of one of your guards, and quickly down the sideline. P.J. Tucker had a good look. Aldridge will be at the free throw line. You know, Dora just committed his third personal foul. Another problem for Texas Tech. That was a 223 left in the half, and Bob Knight is not substituting his lead Dora out there. Asking to play smart and not commit the fourth foul. Well, Dora has some experience. He's played a lot of minutes over the last couple of seasons, and you right now ask him to do your basic things. Don't take any chances. Bosco defended by Aldridge. Now Bosco here. Sorry, that was Michael Prince a moment ago. Bosco's That's more of a perimeter shooter. Uh, Prince is more of a mid-range shooter. Darrell Dora got that one down. Texas Tech needed it that way. They're still down by 11. A minute 52 left in the first half. Gibson, Abrams against Bosco. Lawrence and Nohery. Daniel Gibson penetrated and lost the ball. Oh, terrific to help defense there by Texas Tech. Lohan blocked by Ashley, but the foul committed by Connor Ashley, the 6'9 freshman. Well, Texas Tech with the good help defense, knocked the ball loose. They're quick out on the attack. Put the ball in the hands of Jarius Jackson. That'll get your club going. Lorhorn running the wing. Strong with the finish, but he's going, going against Aldridge and Ashley. Ashley's out there at about 6'10". Lorhorn got it down. Five points for Dio on Lorhorn today. Make it six. Daryl Dora taken out of the ball game. Jeremy Butel in there for Texas Tech. Not a big tech team on the floor right now. 
first practice gets right after him going into the low paint. Abrams, Tucker, Gibson. 21 to shoot for Texas. Abrams over to Aldridge, but it's coming back outside, and the shot won't fall. Rebound, Lohorn slapped it back outside, but saved by Texas. And that gets a fresh 35 seconds for the Longhorn. Abrams, boy, is he some kind of quick? Do it down inside to LaMarcus Aldridge, and he converted it. A.J. Uh, Abrams has a terrific assist to turnover ratio, especially in league play. How about a first-year player? 2.6 assists for every one turnover. Always a good offensive player, but his defense is what really caught the eye of Rick Barnes. When he improved his defense, he picked up playing time for Texas. Long try, Bosco, and he knocks down the three. Alan Bosco, a 6-3 freshman from Bedford, Texas, whose dad played basketball in Denmark, of all places. Well, what they're asking for Bosco is to play a little bit faster. He's a good perimeter shooter. They really hadn't gotten enough minutes to catch up with the game at this level. Just less than a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. 16 to shoot. Texas just dribbling the basketball. Abrams looking over at his coach. Rick Barnes now here's the penetration from Abrams and shot on the glass and good. And everybody hit the deck. Abrams and Bosco went down in the lane. And the foul against Bosco. Well, Abrams really did a nice job of seeing the floor right there. Had plenty of time to check it out. And saw an open lane. Look at all the room he has driving right through there. Nobody really stepping over until late for Texas Tech. Came way too late. Abrams is right at the front edge of the rim. Abrams converts it. A.J. Abrams with a half dozen points. And the clock stops with 4.7 seconds left in our first half. Bob Knight talking to his club. They've hung tough. They're down by 11 right now. And here's the way the brackets look at the Big 12 Championship. This one, Texas Tech and Texas. Next up, Colorado and Texas A&M. Then Oklahoma State and Kansas hook up at 6 tonight. And then Nebraska and Oklahoma. Nebraska winning the nightcap last night over Missouri. Oklahoma State took out Iowa State. Colorado beat Baylor. Texas Tech took down Kansas State yesterday. And now the top four seeds have come out to play today. Well, Kansas concerned about their matchup with Oklahoma State. And Nebraska beat Oklahoma by a point the first weekend of the season. That game played in Lincoln. Oklahoma led throughout most of the game. Nebraska played well way to, late to edge one out. Red Raiders have 4.7 seconds to get it done, and they give it to Jackson. He shoots on the run and misses. And the first half has come to an end, and Texas, the number one seed, leading the number eight seed, Texas Tech, by 11 at halftime here. 36-25, our score in the first of four games here today at the American Airlines Center. Off the floor with his club, Rick Barnes, in his eighth year at Texas, seeing another good year for the Longhorns. They're 25 and 5 coming in. They lead by 11 as they work on their 26th victory here today. The Longhorns have opened that 11 point lead. They just keep steady pressure on Texas Tech. The Red Raiders hung in there for a long time. They're still in it, down by 11, but they've got a lot of work to do. Well, Texas seems to go about it with a business like approach. Just steady. Everybody they send on the floor is talented. Texas Tech doing what they can, running their offense, but having a hard time completing plays in close. Let's take a look now at the Shelter Insurance first half highlights. Well, Texas Tech really got things off to a good start. They went to Henry Ogden early on in the ball game. That was his only three, just one of four, three fouls in that first half. Yo Lorhorn, strong inside on that drive. He's got six points and breaks all along with three rebounds. But Texas with so many weapons. Daniel Gibson, eight points, has a couple threes in the first half. Texas moving the ball around against so many weapons. So Marcus Aldridge leads all scorers, nine points, five boards halfway through. First half stats look like this. Neither team shooting it that well, but Texas a little bit better. And look at the rebounding margin. That's what you talked about earlier. In the first two matchups, the Longhorns out rebounding them. And look at the second chance points. Texas, because of that advantage on the boards, getting those second chances and converting. Fred, they've got too many numbers up front. They've got too many guys. They're bigger and stronger, able to crash the glass. And while Texas, a talented team, they're still a young team. Buckman. 
Starts the second half. He played just four minutes in that first half after picking up two early fouls. Raiders trying to find it early, and Buckman just picked up a personal foul to start the second half. For Brad Buckman, that's going to be number oh, three, and not the way he wanted to start the second half after not playing all that much in the first half. The Longhorns of Texas lead the nation in scoring margin, outscoring their opponents by 18 a game, and in rebounding margin, they're our rebounding teams by 11 a game. Number one in the nation in both those categories, and both those categories showing up here in the first half against Texas Tech. And Fred, we talk about that next game being a big one. Is it a play-in game for Colorado or Texas A&M? Well, is this a, a weekend where Texas can elevate their status to a number one seed? So everybody here playing this weekend uh, has got a lot on the line. Let's take a look at our assist leaders brought to you by Cargo. Collaborate, create, and succeed. I've got a question. You see Gibson with three and Dora with two for Texas. I got a question about Colorado. Suppose they lose by a point today. Does that mean they're not good enough? Well, that's, a, that's enough to, for maybe the committee to say that's enough. Darius Jackson, who scored 11 points at the free throw line yesterday, gets his first free throw of the day down here. He has six in this ball game. Jackson, two for seven the floor here, was four for 17 yesterday. Played 40 minutes in yesterday's ball game. Played 20 minutes in the first half here this afternoon. Or he and Zeno just keep going. They've got motors. Well, they had a good teacher in Ronald Ross who went from walk on his first year to captain of the team and an all-conference player and a pro player by the time his career was over. And when you get your best players or your hardest workers, you've really got the cornerstones for your program. We you see Rick Barnes strolling along the sideline as Bob Knight looks on from the Texas Tech bench. Rick Barnes did not like that foul call at all. And he's talking to one of the officials, Randy Heinerman, over there. Boss Cole, Jackson. Texas showing them the zone. Well, Texas maybe going to play a little more zone now with Brad Buckman on the bench with four fouls. He'll be sitting there for quite a while. Texas likes to match, likes to match up with the two three. Alan Bosco with that shot from the baseline right there. Terrific three-point shooter. That's why he got minutes in the first half. Tech was looking for offense. He got pound points here in the second. He's hit a pair of threes here. Said he could shoot him. Let's watch him do it. Well, they say he is their best long-range shooter. He has certainly been their most consistent. At 15 points against Kansas State on five of eight from three-point line. Hope that he has another good shooting day today. Daniel Gibson with the answer at the other end. He has 11 points. And Texas by nine. Daniel Gibson about two-thirds of his shots are from behind that line, so comfortable from long range. Darrell Dora. Jackson. Ten Rodman back. Yeah, Texas doesn't just pack in that zone either. They stretch out, get a little ball pressure, pass in behind it, but then they got a lot of range and shot blockers behind it. Second three of the day for Jerry S. Jackson. He now has ten points. And it's a six-point lead for Texas. The Red Raiders hanging around. Well, when you think of all the things the Raiders got to do to stay in this one, absolutely must have a good shooting performance. Daniel Gibson fouled Jackson after the Jackson interception. Both teams have come out shooting the ball well here in the second half. The inbound play, a set play for Daniel Gibson. Texas Tech moving it around up top. Jay Jackson, he buries one from the top of the key. Texas outscored Texas Tech 14-4 down the stretch in the first half. Now Texas Tech with the ball down by only six. Jackson. Last three Tech baskets have been three-point baskets, and now we've got a whistle blowing and a timeout here. 17-55 left in this game. Bob Knight says we're doing okay. We'll be back. Action from the Big 12 Championships in Dallas. Texas leading Texas Tech by six. Jarius Jackson trying to find the range here in the second half. He has been the leader of this team all year long, averaging 20 points a ball game. And there he is with the basketball, looking at a Texas zone. Texas opened the ball game with a man-to-man. -man. They've shown zone here in the second half. Backup player on the floor, Connor Ashley. They want to protect him defensively. Yesterday, 
as Texas Tech beat Kansas State, and there's Tucker. That's tough shooting luck. It was in and out, and a foul on Daryl Dora, and that's going to hurt. That is Dora's fourth personal foul, and we have 17 minutes and 17 seconds to play. Foul is number 44, Daryl Dora, and the Red Raiders is fourth. Eight seconds. How about Miami hanging in there with Duke? Ohio State coming back against Penn State. Kick try, won't fall. Back inside, Pence is getting some tough shooting left. And Aldridge got a strip by Alan Bosco. Here come the Raiders down by a half dozen points. Texas Tech, Tech fortunate right there. Lamarcus Aldridge unable to finish that one. He looked like a man standing in there against the Oakland. Bosco, bounce pass, baseline. Dora stuck it. Darryl Dora now has eight. And Texas Tech down four. That could be good news for Texas Tech with Dora getting off to a good start here in the second half. But you mentioned earlier, all kinds of foul trouble. He's playing with four. Hunter Ogden, he's out there. He's got three fouls. Of course, Brad Buckman already sitting over on the Texas bench. He's got four fouls. Lamarcus Aldridge, the 6'10 center, they left him alone, and he knocks down a two. Well, Lamarcus Aldridge went to there showing you pretty much the complete package. We saw him in battling on the glass with the baseline the last possession. Now he hits one from the high key the next time down. Bosco got a look and stuck it. That's a three. Well, then Bosco has nine. Well, threes will keep you into a ball game. Texas Tech has to hope that they can take it and shoot well from long range. B.J. Tucker scoring at the other end, 43-38, a five-point lead to Texas. Bosco against Abrams, now Jarius Jackson against Daniel Gibson. And Rogan defended by Tucker. Texas Tech has shot it well enough from long range. Texas will go man-to-man. -man. A three for Daryl Dora. And the Red Raiders really hanging tough. They're down only two. They fell behind by 13 in the first half, and here they are. Ought to be playing relaxed. They've got everything to gain and nothing to lose. There aren't many people in this building who expect them to walk out of here with a win. P.J. Tucker at the other end. He now has 13. It seems like Texas always has an answer. Certainly Tucker will beat. Marcus Aldridge at 11. Aldridge getting out and stretching out that defense going against Daryl Dora. Last call, Dora. Flips a pass through the lane. Lohorn gets the shot and sticks it. Terrific interior passing. Great dump down pass by Daryl Dora playing out high. Good completion to that play for Texas Tech. They're playing with some confidence right now. That's a little Bob Knight basketball right there, wasn't it? Yeah, good spacing, good ball handling. Again, the Marcus <laughs> He's got a sweet touch, he has. Well, he's got 13. At 6'10, that's a little bit conservative. He can step out there and hit the shot. Well, Texas Tech shooting it right now, but they don't want to get into a shootout with Texas. They don't have enough weapons. Dora. Now Tanner Ogden. Bosco. Jarius Jackson pops up and sticks it. Really got up on elevation with that jump shot. Good from the top of the jump. That gets him over the top of the defenders. Tech really shooting her well here in the second half. They struggled the last 10 minutes of the first half, but they come out on fire in the second. And making a fight out of it. 47-45 Texas. Tucker faces Lohorn. Now Daniel Gibson from way outside. Short look at Lamarcus Aldridge. High in there. And we have a break right now. 13-59 left in our game. Look at the three-point shooting. Daryl Dora has fouled out of the ball game. He fouls out with his team down by two, but 13.59 to play. Dora with 11 points in this ball game, really contributing, also had three rebounds. So we'll see if Texas Tech can hold up. Michael Prince is on the floor replacing him. Didn't play a lot in the first half. Aldridge dumps it down off the baseline. Tucker with a miss, rebound, Texas Tech. Here come the Red Raiders, they could tie it here. Texas Tech was a young team when this season started. They're a real young team right now. Look at Texas Tech. Seven of eight from the floor here in the second half. to scratch their way back into this one. This kid's been a hot shooter. Bosco with a miss that time. He had knocked down three trays prior to that shot. 
Texas Tech will keep the ball. The first 35. Jarius Jackson will play the inbounds pass. Alan Bosco, look how open he is. Of course, should be open. He's a full five feet behind that three-point line. But a defender rushing out at him, trying to close him out. Texas Tech does not have much experience on the floor right now. You got the two 40-minute guys in Zeno and Jackson. Other than that, you got guys that don't get a lot of playing time. Basketball got one down, but it rattled back out on him. Now P.J. Tucker, now Abrams, now Connor Ashley. Gibson. Texas getting a stout argument here from Texas Tech. Abrams very quick, but Bosco stays with him. Texas with three starters on the floor right now. Gibson, Tucker, LaMarcus Aldridge. Double backup. Down inside, they get it that time. Connor Ashley with the finish there. Good dump down pass. Texas, good movement on the offensive time. That time in. Four for Connor Ashley. Texas up by four. Hanner up. Jackson got a look. He can shoot it and does. That's a three. Jarius Jackson starting to find the range after a somewhat cold start. Well, he's the guy that can shoot Texas Tech into this ball game. He needs to get touches every time down. Of course, they usually have the ball coming into the offensive end. There is Jackson now with 15 points. Abrams lets one fly. Too strong. Rebound long as LaMarcus Aldridge, and it's in and out. Won't go. They fight for it. Bosco comes out for Texas Tech. Darius Jackson running ahead of him. Now they go Tanner Ogden. Now Bosco. Now Jackson. Red Raiders down one, looking for the lead. Zeno, Bosco. 13 to shoot. Bosco will shoot. And it's too strong. Look at Zeno go up. And whose ball? It'll be Texas ball. Boy, Bob Knight is really upset with this club as they come off the court. We've got a timeout. 11.28 to play. It is a one-point lead to Texas. We've got action coming your way from Dallas. Inside. Don't have Daryl Dora or John Plepka. And right here, Tanner Ogden inside rebounding position on LaMarcus Aldridge. But I think you see the problems right there. Aldridge at 6'10", able to reach up over the top. Missed that stick back. Texas Tech came away, but dodged a bullet right there. Tanner Ogden has had a tough shooting day here today. So far, he hasn't quit shooting, but Ogden won for six. After coming off the bench and surprising Kansas State with 14 points yesterday, Again, he had scored 16 in the entire conference season. Yeah, he came out and scored 14, did a lot of nice things for Texas Tech yesterday, besides the points. Well, this will be valuable experience for these young players this year, but again, they have come this far in this ballgame. It's a great chance to have a huge upset. Abrams over Bosco with the miss, and Tanner Ogden grabs the rebound. His brother Chris, one of the coaches sitting on the Texas bench, watching little brother play pretty well. Lohard off the heel of the rim over the board out of bounds to Texas. The Longhorns get it back, still leading by one with 11 minutes left in the game. And Texas Tech putting up a battle here today after losing by 24 and 21, respectively, in their first two matchups with Texas this year. Well, Texas averages about 10 more points per ball game than Texas Tech does. So as long as that score could be held down, it would seem to favor the Red Raiders. Tanner Ogden will get another rebound. That's his sixth. And those last two possessions for Texas has been one shot and out. Tech is doing a good job on the glass since that last break. If the Red Raiders grab the lead here, you're going to hear an eruption from the Texas Tech section. Well, you're going to hear it from everywhere except the Texas section because when you get the tournament, everybody roots for the underdog. Isn't that the truth? You know, the later this ball game gets, the more fans the Red Raiders are going to have. Bosco took shot off the baseline. Foul. Shot didn't fall, but he was fouled on the shot, and he'll shoot too. Don't you think the AM fans are huge Red Raider fans right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They know who they'd rather play tomorrow, whether they admit it or not. Well, of course, they got to get through the action today, but certainly Oklahoma and the Kansas fans in the building are be pulling for Texas Tech. Bosco ties the ball game. He now has 10 points. 
Third foul on P.J. Tucker, and the Red Raiders have the lead. Well, he's got a nice release. You can see why he's a good shooter. 18 of 22 free throws coming into this tournament. You can hear some noise in the background in the arena now. And they didn't all come from Lubbock. No, they did not. <laughs> They're coming from all points in Texas right now. Shot good by Daniel Gibson. Well, the lead didn't last long. That was the first lead Texas Tech had had since back in 13-41 in the first half. They led 14-13. to They grabbed a brief lead on the two free throws, but Gibson had the answer. And Texas backed up by two off the three-point shot. Texas Tech continues to flash players into that high lane area, trying to penetrate that zone. Deflection on Marcus Aldridge. Paulino, Abram from the wing, and an out. Look at Aldridge. Got tired of trying to just stick it off the glass. He missed four or five shots in close here in this half alone. Well, they thought, hey, I'll just go ahead and throw one down. Yeah, I know. What. If I get my hand halfway down that cylinder, <laughs> it's going to stay. 54-50, Texas. Red Raiders trying to answer Martin Zeno on the baseline. That's a two. That's his fourth point of the game. He's been reasonably quiet. 8.58 to play. Texas Tech team right now looks like they're playing a league of 6-5 and under. But they're battling against the Giants. Darryl Dora has fouled out. John Klefka hasn't played today not with an ankle injury. Played just a couple minutes in yesterday's game. Apparently unable to go today. Tucker throws it back outside. Abrams tend to shoot for Texas. Red Raiders trying to stick it to him on defense. Abrams off the dribble, pulls up, fires off the rim. No good. Look at Aldridge, how long he is. He had it, then he lost it. And we've got a foul call that's going to go against LaMarcus Aldridge. Martin Zeno was in there battling with a 6'10 LaMarcus Aldridge. And now let's take a look at our Red Lobster. Nothing but net shot of the game. Who else? Came in the second half, and when Texas Tech started hitting threes, they started to crawl out, claw back into this game. That was the first foul on the Marcus Aldridge. Martin Zeno, 72% shooter. They throw good. He has five points, and it's a one-point ball game. The longer Texas Tech stays in the neighborhood, the more dangerous they're going to get. Texas does not want this coming down to the final couple of possessions here today. What a win this would be for the Red Raider program. There's Plefka over on the bench. Got that bad ankle. Played a few minutes yesterday, but wasn't moving very well. Hadn't gotten any closer to this ball game today than where he is right now. Polino. Gibson. Jarius Jackson. A great score staying with him on defense. Slides through a screen. Polino in the lane. Off the glass and good, and a foul call. Ken Polino with a big bucket for Texas, his seventh point, and he will go to the line. I think Texas would like to see these Texas Tech young players come out and try to defend on the perimeter. Ogden just has Polino flash around him, take it to the rim. Texas Tech a little bit late getting there with the defensive help. Martin Zeno trying to get into the area. They're just in time to draw the foul. Polino with a three point play. First foul on Martin Zeno. Texas lead is three. And this press was effective for the Longhorns in the first half. Not much of pressure applied right there. They go for the trap. Zeno. They've got their shooters out on the wing. Ogden on one wing. Still over here on the near side. Now they rotate. Longhorn running in and out of the lane. At the baseline, Jackson shot one ball. And the rebound, P.J. Tucker for Texas. Well, they worked hard for that shot and didn't get a reward. Well, they had the four balance that they wanted. The shooter spaced out, trying to stretch that Texas defense. And Texas Ogden. doing a nice job of getting inside rebounding position over the last five minutes. Ogden grabbed his seventh rebound off the Texas Pimps. The Red Raiders down three, 7-10 to play. Rohan, Costco. In the middle, Martin Zeno shot no. Rebound picked off by Tanner Ogden. Great dish inside, and Aldridge at a block of the Lowhorn shot. LaMarcus Aldridge coming up big for Texas. Gibson off the glass. No. And Aldridge got the rebound almost uncontested, and he has 17 points. And 
He's been, he's been a difference maker. That defensive end, he altered one shot, he blocked another shot, then got a board and a stick back on the offensive end. He's taking over this ball game. He's got a double double. 17 points, 12 rebounds. Ogden, Jackson, Bosco. Texas by five. Martin Zeno. Bosco couldn't drop it. Aldridge grabs his 13th rebound of the day. And Texas Tech working their offense, flashing into the middle of the zone, getting the wide open shot. He's good hit. Abrams so quick. Eight points for A.J. Abrams. Texas going to pull away down this red. You see the clock, 6.05 to play. Bob Knight wants to talk about it. Going to give his club a little bit of a breather and see if he can find some help for him over there. Bob Knight has been here so many times. And his club has played so well and so hard in this game today. It's Texas pressure and the height, the size, everything about him going to take control on Texas Tech now or can Bob Knight find a way with this team? Well, Texas Tech team is playing loose. Texas knows they have a lot of weapons. Stay with your program and hope that solid play down the stretch will take over. They've got it in pretty good position right now. A timely timeout taken by Bob Knight to try to stop the bleeding. Brad Buckman has played maybe four and a half minutes here this afternoon. Four minutes in the first half, maybe 30 seconds here in the second half. Might be the trump card in today's game. Rick Barnes is going to go ahead and play it with six minutes left in the contest. Texas Tech playing shorthanded. John Clufton not playing with a bad ankle. Dara Dora fouled out with 13.59 left in the game. Texas Tech down seven right now with the basketball needing points. And Texas going for it right now. They've got their five original starters on the floor. Foul trouble or no, they're all out there in a 2-3 zone. Jarius Jackson, Bosco, Zeno. Zeno the slashing player. Shooters out on the wings, both wings. Ogden can't get one to drop. He's now one for seven from the floor. And they're 0 for two now with two good looks. Bosco on one side, Ogden wide open on the other side. The last two possessions for the Red Raiders. Buckman in the middle of Marcus Aldridge. Daniel Gibson. Polino got a look, got a bucket. That's a three. Texas beginning to pull away again. They were up by 13. Texas Tech came back to take the lead. And now it's a 10-point lead for Texas. In important ball games, close games late, better players are supposed to take over. And I think that's what we've seen from Texas over the last couple minutes. It's a 10-0 run to get the 10-point lead. Bosco driving to the baseline. Inside, tough shot. He got it. That's not necessarily his game. He would like to take the perimeter shot, but he's missed a couple recently. Put the ball on the floor. Pretty good finish right there for a youngster. 13 points for Alan Bosco. Tucker, Polino. Bosco defending Polino. Texas not in a hurry. 4.40 to play. Buckman lets one fly for three that won't go. And look at Aldridge. Whistle blowing and a foul called. Aldridge went up to get the rebound. And a foul stops the play. We have a timeout. Texas up by eight with 4.36 to play. Texas Tech trying to hang on. Let's take a look now at our defensive player of the game brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. How about LaMarcus Aldridge? Well, he has taken over this ball game in the last two or three minutes. A couple blocks, one in the first half, one here in the second half. Responsible for a steal. Pretty much a complete package for Texas. He has done a lot. 17 points, 15 rebounds, and offensive end, he's had nine offensive rebounds. Polino. Daniel Gibson goes by Jarius Jackson, gives it up to Tucker. Now Aldridge looking for some help. 15 to shoot for Texas. 4.15 to play. Marcus Aldridge got it, and he's fouled. What else can he do? Look at the smile. Yeah, go ahead. Why not? Well, he's not going to get many shots blocked. He's already out there at 6'10". Good elevation on shot. Shoots it from high over his head. The screen is set. Instead of rolling to the basket, he fans out. Marquezino stepping up trying to block that shot. He's only 6'5". You're simply not going to get to his jump shot. Not at this level. Lamarcus Aldridge now with 20 points and 15 rebounds. 
And Texas up by 11 with four minutes to play. Texas Tech has given it a battle, but the battle may be nearing an end. Texas is starting to stretch their defense now, starting to find those shooters on the perimeter. Tech's going to have to get the ball inside and force that defense to pack it a little bit. Oh, and out of the lane, the shot won't go. D.J. Tucker with his 11th rebound of the day to go with his eight points. And as hot as Texas Tech was earlier in this half, they've cooled down considerably over the last couple possessions. Could be a little bit of fatigue. They wouldn't want to tell you that. They probably wouldn't agree with it, but it could be. Shot in the corner, no. Zeno grabs the board. Jarius Jackson on the move with the ball. If the Raiders come back, they're probably going to have to do it with three-point shots. Jackson's looking, got one. You look into the eyes of these players, and Texas looks like a team experienced like they're expected to win and have to pull one out late. Texas Tech hanging as tough as they can. Jarius Jackson knocks down another three, his fourth of the game. Jackson trying to hold him up. 18 points for Jarius Jackson. Texas playing with confidence. Texas Tech playing with a lot of heart right now. Jackson had 21 points in yesterday's win over Kansas State. 18 more here today. Well, what a player he is. Jackson, just a junior. B.J. Tucker, what a player he is. Try the player of the year in the Big 12 Conference. <laughs> Brad Buckman hasn't had much of a day. Fitchell just found him again. Poor Brad Buckman, just nothing has gone his way today. He is gone for the day. 2.30 to play. Texas up by eight. Look at the eyes of the players from both teams. The Red Raiders and the Longhorns have not left much out there today. They've given it a lot. And Texas, number one seed in this tournament, is going to advance. They're up by eight with 2.30 to play. Unless the Red Raiders can really find a stroke from long range. Texas coming off the bench ahead by eight. Two and a half minutes to play in Dallas. Texas with an eight point lead over Texas Tech. Game one of day two of uh, the Big 12 championships at the American Airlines Arena in Dallas, Texas. The Big 12 quarterfinals along with Paul Spudorf, I'm Fred White. Alan Vostel on the line for Texas Tech. The freshman had a good day. Three for three at the free throw line now. Vostel with 13, make it 14 points on the day. And a chance to get the Red Raiders in six with two and a half to play. Boy, they've been tough to knock out of here today. Missed that one, but the Red Raiders have been down by 13, came back to take the lead, went down by double digits again, and they're still hanging around. Texas Tech has spent so much time this year trying to find a consistent third score. With injuries and players fouled out of this ball game, they're down to a couple of freshmen trying to lead their way back, along with Jarius Jackson and Mark Mazzino. Well, Plufka hasn't played a second today because of a bad ankle. Jared Dora fouled out with 13.59 to play. Now Paulino for Texas with a nice soft touch. And what a possession for the Longhorns right there. Paulino took that shot with two seconds left on the shot clock. Texas really comfortable coming down, spread the floor, move it around, pass it, put it on the floor, and shoot late. Oh, Jarius Jackson with a soft shot over Aldridge, but it wouldn't fall for him. And here come the Longhorns now, up by nine, with a minute 37 to play. The number one seed looking for all the world like they're going to advance and take the number eight seed, Texas Tech out. Texas Tech beat Kansas State yesterday. Coming up next, Colorado and Texas A&M. Texas with three guards on the floor right now. All three have played the point guard position over the last couple of years. A.J. Abrams working against Bosco and a foul call on Alan Bosco. On the number 20, Alan Bosco on the Red Raiders. Time now to name our Phillips 66 player of the game, and this guy ended those arguments a long time ago. LaMarcus Aldridge today has 20 points, 15 rebounds, and nine of those on the offensive the end. That's a career high in offensive rebounds. Blocked a couple of shots, changed about a dozen more. And in general, he's been a real nice guy. Well, he really picked <laughs> up his team today with Brad Buckman in foul trouble really from the start of the get ball game. Marcus Aldridge really needed to step up this afternoon. Talking to Scott McConnell, the Texas Sports Information Director. 
He said he is a remarkable kid. Said he is always on time. He's going to be a minute late. He calls you. Now Brad Beckman's had the other kind of the day. The poor guy just didn't get much done today in foul trouble all day. Brad Beckman fouled out of the ball game. Did not score. He'll be happy they're going to play again tomorrow. He'll have fresh legs for it. Tanner Ogden. He's had a tough shooting day. Lowhorn grabs the rebound. They're looking for a three with a minute three to play. And Texas putting all kinds of pressure on that three-point shot. Bosco, Tanner Ogden. You got to keep checking it up there. Tanner Ogden is one for eight today. And now a foul called on Texas as Jackson came down the lane. Texas by 11. 54 seconds to play. Colorado beating Baylor yesterday in a tough ball game. We'll take on a and next. And tonight, Oklahoma State in Kansas and Nebraska and Oklahoma. Darius Jackson. Oh, what a nice player he is. Huh? Good recognition. First team all-conference. As much on his shoulders as any other guard in this league trying to lead this young Red Raider club. Darius Jackson now has 20 points in this ball game. He had 21 yesterday. Jackson hitting six out of 13 shots today, and now Bosco knocks the ball loose, and a big scramble near midcourt, and it's going to be a held ball. The possession arrow belongs to Texas. Rick Barnes, the Texas coach, has another good year. Six consecutive 20-win seasons for Texas. Well, what a year they've had at the University of Texas. They won the national championship in football. There's a foul on Jerry. Since the Big 12 was formed, Texas has won 10 national championships in various sports. Well, Rick Barnes has this program where he wants it right now. What a performance he's had in his eighth year at Texas. They've been in the top four in this league seven of the eight years. That was about 23 wins per year since he's been at Texas. And this is still a young basketball team. Paulino is a senior. Brad Buckman is a senior. And what he's got is he's got athletes coming in to put in a lot of time as a freshman. Brad Buckman's been a starter since his freshman year. E.J. Tucker was a starter as a freshman. Daniel Gibson's a starter as a freshman. You get very familiar with their name from their first year in their program. Jarius Jackson still firing. He's going to go down firing. It's a seven-point lead for Texas now as the Raiders commit the foul to stop the clock with 28 and a half seconds left in the game. Texas now will have won a school record 26 games this year. Here's their tournament resume. They beat Iowa, Memphis, and Villanova in the notable column. Well, Texas this weekend is playing for a possible number one seed, and that could be huge. They are deserving. Well, the big thing, if you get a number one seed, you're not going to travel very far. You're going to stay close to home. Well, in the first and second rounds, we'll be played right in this arena next week. And quite likely, Texas will be here. Jarius Jackson. He's going to go down firing, like we said. Jackson now has 26 points. And it's a four-point ball game with 21 seconds to play. And now a foul called, I think, on Jarius Jackson. Can they pull the miracle? Well, they really needed to get that foul like they did before the ball even got inbounds. They can ill afford to have any one of those 21 seconds go off the clock. Get the foul, hope Texas misses a free throw, and attack quickly on the offensive end. Back-to-back -back -back three-point baskets by Jay Jackson. Get the door ajar ever so slightly for the Red Raiders. Gibson at the line, 73% shooter, just missed one. Got that one. Neil Gibson, the point guard for Texas, and a good one. 15 points, five assists today. Make it 16 points and looking for 17 now. Got a vote. Back in the line up so Texas by six with 21 seconds to play. Colorado and Texas A&M coming up next. Gary Jackson, Gary Jackson looking for one more three-point attempt. Instead, Bosco at the baseline. Now Jackson puts it on the deck. Great ball fake. He got fouled on a three-point shot and stops the clock with 11 points and seven seconds to play. That possession took about 10 seconds. But Jay Jackson once again making it happen for Texas Tech. Hits two consecutive threes. Tough to get a shot right there. Well, go ahead. I'll just find a way to get myself to the free throw line. See if I can convert three of them there. 
Well, it's been a competitive tournament so far. All five games have been decided by nine points or less. This could make this one a four-point ball game. 28 points for Jarius Jackson, who can make it a three-point ball game. If they get this one, it's a three-point game with 11.7 seconds to play. Guess what? It's a one-possession game. And Rick Barnes gets a big rebounder kind of actually off the floor. He'll get a third guard back on the floor in A.J. Abrams. Miss. And P.J. Tucker grabs the rebound for Texas. He's fouled by Tanner Ogden. And that'll do it for Tanner Ogden. He and Bosco were both there. Ogden hung around a long time in this ballgame. Had three fouls in the first half. Spent some time on the bench the last eight minutes of that half. And was out here almost all the second half as his big brother looks on from the opposite bench. Ogden fouls out with three points. Chris Ogden, who played at Texas, one of the coach on the coaching staff down there now. Little brother Tanner, who had 14 points in yesterday's win over Kansas State, fouls out. And the Texas Tech fans sitting up behind the bench give him a great ovation. He had eight rebounds today and six assists. The shots weren't falling for him. But he was on the boards and making passes. Now P.J. Tucker to the line. Eight point seven seconds to play, and in immortal words of the Vern Gosden song, that'll just about do it. Won't it? Got him both. So P.J. Tucker today. Thirteen rebounds on the day to go along with his ten points. He's got a double double, along with Lamarcus Aldridge, who also has one. Well, Texas Tech Texas gets in a little back. too big a hurry. A yeah. Turnover right there, and that should do it. Seven point three seconds to play. Texas will play it in with a six point lead. P.J. Abrams looking hands it to Daniel Gibson, who's fouled by Dior Lohorn. Rick Barnes looking on from the sideline. Here are the brackets. Texas Tech and Texas here. Texas will advance. They'll play the winner of the Colorado-Texas A&M game. Oklahoma State and Kansas tonight, followed by Nebraska-Oklahoma. Gibson's free throw good. Daniel Gibson, the 6'2 sophomore from Houston, from Jones High School, has 18 points and five assists. One of the things that Texas is able to do now, keep the in-state boys playing here in the state of Texas. Everybody recruiting this state are. Texas A&M is doing a good job. Bob Knight is recruiting Texas and Louisiana. Jarius Jackson, a little too strong, and that's going to do it. This one is over, and Texas advances. The number one seed beats Texas Tech. 77-70, the final score. Here in quarterfinal action today, Lamarcus Aldridge, our player of the game, what a day he had. Lamarcus Aldridge, 20 points, 16 rebounds, nine of those on the offensive glass. It was just a little too much for Texas Tech to overcome. They beat the Red Raiders for the third time this year, Paul, but it was different today. Yeah, it was a lot different today. Texas Tech learned a lot from the first couple times around against Texas, but it's hard to combat that kind of size, that kind of athletic ability. And you put P.J. Tucker on the floor alongside LaMarcus Aldridge. There you've got the battler in the upper body strength, the player of the year in this conference. Terrific front line for Texas. And Jay Jackson, how about his effort over the last couple days? He played 40 minutes yesterday. He was as good as he was yesterday. Today, he went 40 again today. So again, Texas wins at 77-70. One more thing about Marcus Aldridge, he played 40 minutes today. He never left the floor, except to jump and score. <laughs> there he goes, our player of the game. 77-70, Texas wins it. Let's get you to Studio 66, Duck Bell and Chris Piper. Take it, guys. Fred, thank you very much. In fact, uh, Rick Barnes is walking right behind me. So, uh, Coach, uh, let me slide over. Hey, you slide in. Here today. <laughs> there you go. Good timing, Coach. Congratulations on a 77-70 win over Texas Tech. Third time you faced the team. First two games were relatively comfortable wins for you. You had to figure coming into this one it was going to be a little more difficult. Well, it is difficult, obviously, this time of year. You know, there's a lot a lot of different things going on with the tournament, the March Madness. But uh, I didn't think we – I thought LaMarcus was terrific today. I didn't think we got great play. A.J. Abrams was pretty good. But uh, Brad Buckman never got into the game. And uh, – Give Tech credit. I, you know, I don't think there's a better coach in the country than Bob Knight. And uh, 
his guys never quit. Well, they're so tough to guard, obviously, the motion offense, and they like to get inside on you. LaMarcus Aldridge altered a lot of shots, but what about on the offensive end for you? What did you see different for you guys this afternoon? Well, what they did, you know, they, they I think, came into the game, and I told the team this. I thought they said they're going to have to make a lot of jump shots to beat us. And, uh, you know, they came in really back into the lane really early. They were giving Brad Buckman, all of our post guys, anything we wanted from 10 feet. Second half, we started taking the 15-footer, and, uh, and you know, that was their game plan. Hey, let's make sure uh, they're going to beat us, going to beat us on the perimeter. Obviously, LaMarcus Aldridge is, is just fantastic and getting better every game, though. You know, you've seen a lot of guys with talent, but his work ethic as well really sets him apart, don't you think, Coach? You know, Chris, he really he's a kid that loves to be coached. He really does. I've, I don't know if I've ever had a kid that uh, goes about the game as, as the process in terms of trying to get better. And, uh, you know, people talk about scratching the surface. He hasn't even began to be what he can do. Well, he decided, I think, here in the second half just to be dominating inside, and he's going against 6'5", guys who really use his size. But not only that, the quickness, too, I think is surprising. From Great quickness, and, you know, he can shoot it, too. Now, he really, people, I think, underestimate his shooting now. It was hard to get him the ball in there because once he got it, you know, they were going to double team him and surround him. But uh, he stayed patient, did a good job. And uh, again, he's got he's got it, it can give it to you from a lot of different angles. Coach, talk about your defensive effort because we spent so much time talking about your offensive exploits and you have outstanding offensive players. But defensively, you're improving. Well, we are. You know, we wanted to play some man probably more so today than we more than we did today. But, you know, we got in some foul trouble. Then uh, when we got them in a little bit of foul trouble, we, we stayed zone and, uh, and then they started making some shots, you know, and that's when you start wondering should we get in and stay out, but uh, overall, it was it was good for us. Well, don't you think if you can guard a motion offense defensively, you can guard about anything? Well, believe me, there's not a better there's not a better offensive team in the country in terms of execution than Texas Tech. I mean, if you can guard them, you can guard anybody. I'm not sure we can guard a man to man, but uh, <laughs> they sure test you. Coach, we're gonna get you out of here because Lamarcus is coming up. Uh, how important is it to win a Big 12 championship? You haven't gotten one yet at Texas. Well, I think it's important. I mean, I, I mean, these guys want to. They'd much rather play here tomorrow, or the next day, as opposed to going back to Austin and practicing and uh, right. this time of year you know you, you want to be playing good basketball and you know people say win one and I don't believe that I think guys and you know you want to win I mean every time you walk out you want to do it yeah. coach thanks okay, thank you guys congratulations Texas wins 77-70 to advance to the semifinals